Ruth Werner, and this is my audiovisual sidebar to accompany my article in the November December edition of Massage and Bodywork called Ehlers Danlos Syndrome. This time it's zebras, not horses. EDS has been in the medical record since 400 BCE, but all the versions of this disorder were classified into 13 discrete genetic subtypes that specialists discuss today, just in 2017. So a list and brief descriptions of these subtypes are provided here with the caveat that each individual's experience of this condition is unique and overlap of symptoms between these types is pretty common. The other thing I want to remind you of is that each of these types is related to a unique mutation. And that is what is passed from one generation to the next. So a person with classic EDS may pass on the mutation for classic EDS, and their child may have it in a more or less severe form, but they won't pass on the mutation for some other form of EDS. Um, Someone with classic EDS won't pass on the gene for vascular EDS, for instance. So I hope that's clear. So here's our list. Classic EDS... Uh, This affects the skin, the joints, and the blood vessels. Lesions in the skin include something called papyraceous scarring. These are scars that look like thin, crumpled tissue paper. And nodules at pressure points like elbows or shins. Patients are vulnerable to mitral valve prolapse, dilation of the aorta, and dissecting aneurysms. Classical-like EDS is essentially identical to classical EDS, but it has a different genetic factor. Cardiac valvular EDS is a rare variant with genetic defects that impair the cardiac valves and the aorta. Vascular EDS is a version that affects blood vessels throughout the body and the growth of many tissues. People with vascular EDS are prone to clubfoot, Um, inguinal hernias early in childhood, reduced subcutaneous fat in various places, but particularly in the face, and this renders a a characteristic hollow sort of taut look on the face, Um, and many other problems that can shorten life expectancy. Uh, People with vascular EDS have a high risk for aneurysm, um, arteriovenous malformation, stroke, and seizures. The average lifespan of a person with vascular EDS is 50 years. Hypermobile EDS, this version may be much more common than we know, but it is often undiagnosed. This is made more complicated by the fact that it is the only version of EDS that does not yet have a distinct genetic marker. It's typically less severe than classic EDS, involving chronic pain with hypermobility and postural orthostatic intolerance and other autonomic problems with blood vessel tone and painful constipation with structural weaknesses in the intestines. Hypermobile EDS is the condition that the person who contributed to my article has. She's the one I interviewed. She has lots of repercussions related to her condition, including migraines, joint instability, chronic pain. Her daughter inherited the the same genetic mutation, but her version of hypermobility EDS is even more extreme with more consequences for daily living. Arthrochalacia EDS focuses on joint instability, especially at the hips. The multiple simultaneous dislocations seen with arthrochalacia can be disabling. Dermatosporaxis EDS is a variant that causes short stature with very loose, sagging skin. The sclerae of the eyes are often bluish, denoting limited collagen support. The diaphragm and bladder of people with dermatosporaxis are vulnerable to rupture. Kyphoscoliotic, sorry, kyphoscoliotic EDS is a very severe form, and this involves extreme scoliosis in infants, and the sclerae of the eyes are so delicate that the eyes may actually rupture. Most patients with kyphoscoliotic EDS are unable to walk after age 30. There's a version called brittle cornea syndrome. This form leads to ruptured and detached corneas and permanent vision problems. Spondylodysplastic EDS. In this form, the spine and extremities are stunted. Palms are wrinkled, fingers taper. People with spondylodysplastic EDS may have blue sclerae and protuberant eyes. 
musculocontractual EDS is different. And unlike other forms, this one appears to cause progressive problems in many systems. It gets worse over time. It is associated with developmental delays, muscle weakness, kyphoscoliosis, clubfoot, and eye problems. Myopathic EDS looks a lot like kyphoscoliotic EDS with hypotonia and infantile scoliosis, but again, it's a different genetic mutation. And periodontal EDS, this form prohibits proper linkage between the teeth and the gums, and so patients often lose their teeth. Now, all of this may feel arcane and uh, too, way too much detail. It really is mainly relevant for the people who are living with this condition. But here's the deal. We may have clients who have chronic pain and whose bodies just seem really fragile, who get injured often and who heal slowly. In these cases, it can be reasonable to think about EDS as a possibility. Obviously, we don't diagnose but we can give good advice about getting the right help from the medical community. So I hope this closer look at the 13 subtypes of Ehlers-Danlos syndrome was helpful. Do you have clients who have EDS? There's a remarkable hole in the medical literature about what massage therapy might be able to do to help. I hope you'll consider writing a case report to share your experiences, and you let me know if I can help you with that. Thank you.